here in the United States on 90.1 KSYM FM radio. And now it's being broadcast for your pleasure. You can always check us out online at ksym.org or you can visit us on Facebook, The Wave on KSYM. Thanks and enjoy. Thanks for doing this once again. I'm with uh, Boz Bohr, the legendary guitarist and uh, member of the Polecats. Has been with artists ranging from Christy McCall to Adam Ant and now with Morrissey, of course. You know, Boz, you kind of changed hats recently and really took it and went into the producing field. And you had the band Shoot the Image. Yes. And you produced their debut, Cranes in the City. How was that different from what you've done in the past? Well, the way it came together was very strong out over so many records out now. I think we started talking about it two years ago. And he contacted, found me on the internet, spoke to me, he said he was going to be in London, so I went and found him. He was doing a little acoustic show. I was impressed with his songwriting and his singing. And we took it from there, but it, it was, I mean, I usually work with some indie stuff or rockabilly or, you know, it's what I normally record. So it was nice to get my teeth into something that was a bit more uh, adventurous since and uh, drum, drum beats and live drums. And, yeah, it was right. good. Right, it, it feels, the album feels like it has a very uh, silky, and that, to me that's what it feels like. It's a very smooth, flowing album. And, and I mean, it just, for me, it moves. And it keeps moving. It's like, it feels like a continuous movement. Was that something that, when you took at it from the technical side of it, really worked with them to try to get that? Or what was no. the perspective? <clears throat> no, it just, it was very simple to work. It was simple to find sounds. And yeah. I think I understood the sounds that Simeon could hear in his head. And it was, and the sounds that I, and I'd say, what about that? Ah, that's it, it's perfect. <laughs> And it was fortunate, really, but I mean, that's why I think we got together. Yeah. It wasn't really planned that way, but it did. It was very simple to suggest things that fitted in, that worked well with the, with the songs. How does that vary from the process when you're actually... Because I, I did see on the liner notes, you, you played some instruments on that album. and uh, But I'm sure the process is very different from, for instance, a Morrissey album. I mean, what what when you're in that role... How is it different from the role when you're with, with, with Mars? Uh, well, it's the other side of the, the process. The production side is the other side from the performing side. Uh, I, I did play a few things on it. I remember doing some sax, which Simeon was very keen on me doing, and he liked it, but I, it wasn't my favourite thing to do. <laughs> um, that's why it's different in the way that I'm engineering and setting mics up and recording and dropping in and it I can't well I do do both when I'm working with Morrissey I like a producer and it's I'm channeling stuff through a producer and you know working right. that way and then you just the roles are reversed right and, but it's something I've always done you know right. for 30 years and I've worked as an engineer for six years every day of my life recording when you play is, I mean, that has to be your true, in, at, at, the end, at the end of the day, the true passion that you have is just getting out there and playing guitar, right? Well, <clears throat> where has it changed as you've uh, went through your career? Yeah, it has changed, actually. I used to hate recording. But now I, I really embrace the uh, that idiom of artistry. I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing, you know, make, making music to be listened to forever. But it's completely different from playing a live show that you'll never hear again on, well, nowadays it turns up the next day on YouTube, <laughs> right. you know. Right. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly, when we do a new song, we get in a bus, we put the, put the internet on and go, it's already up there, so, that was already downloaded, you know, half of Art Hound or something from Brixton or Scandinavia, we played in a little tiny club in Norway, and it's already up there, and it's already got 60 views. <laughs> so that's changed things a little bit as well. Um, when you were... Uh, over the, you know you've been with with Mars now for like almost 21 years. Yeah, it's my 21st year of um, employment. I mean, did you ever ever think you would, would last this long? No. I mean, what do you, what do you think the, the the dynamic is? I mean, what what has made it different than maybe other folks? I don't know. Um, we like a lot of the same music from when we were children that right. brought us up, which are my, our main influences through. And it's it's quite uncanny how. There's a lot of connections in there with T-Rex and through punk rock. And so, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Right. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy doing it. Well, absolutely. Um, the dynamic, 
has it changed in the songwriting? Um, I know that you've co-authored a bunch of songs in the past. I mean, one of my favorites uh, is "Why Don't You Find Out for Yourself." You 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 wrote a lot of the. Uh, I didn't write that. You didn't but write it, that. But that, if you look on YouTube again, there's a version of it. There's a rock version of it, really. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't working, so. I suggested that we tried it with acoustic guitars and an upright bass and a small cocktail kit and we set it up in the control room and started playing it and that was the basis of the track. There's also a loop in there of me when we were playing, we were playing along to the, listening to the track and I started on the, on the table that was there and it was a little coffee pot and when I did that the coffee pot went ding, the, the top in the pot. And as I was doing it, I saw Steve Lillywhite, the producer, he brought a microphone over and he started to record what I was doing and he found the best four bar pattern and he looped it throughout the track. I can hear it. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's, that's, I, and I think that's one of the great things about what you guys do and what musicians do is that impromptu creativity, that those, those ideas that just come to you. Well, <clears throat> one of the things I enjoy the most of Morrissey is that there's no real musical boundaries, there's no laws to how it's supposed to be or and I was looking at the set list last night and we did I think we did Maladjusted and it was followed by Paris, which is you know, you look at the, those I mean the most artists play songs and they're all very similar in a similar genre but if you look at Paris, it's almost like a, a French pop tune from the right. 60s and then Maladjusted is a dirty hard hitting vicious streak of venom. Well, know. I was really surprised by that, that that really stuck out of my mind because I think the first first concert I ever went to was in 97 in Central Park and the first track I ever heard you guys play live was Maladjusted and then to, to, to butt that right up against, you know, throwing your arms around yeah. Paris, it, it, it's really amazing, but it worked. Yeah. And that's what's oh, neat. Yeah. And, and, and I enjoy that freedom and the range of music. It never, never gets dull for me. and It never uh, becomes passe or run of the mill. There's, as I say, no rules. It's, it's very good. Are you guys working on anything right now? Well, we have um, the new songs we've been doing. Access my middle name. People are the same everywhere. Scandinavia. Kids are looker. Art Hounds, which we, we play once in uh, Britain. So there's a ton of new songs, but there's no record label, and there's, you know, I don't know what <laughs> we're going to do. I don't know. Right. You know. Are you going to start to continue? I, I know you have, do you own the studios in Portugal? Yeah. Now, do you spend a lot of time there? When I'm not working with Morrissey, that, that year, the year before last, when uh, Shoot the Image, the year, the year like before, yeah, it was though. last year. And uh, well, I've had the place for six years now in Portugal. And the first thing we finished was the studio, and um, so that was up and running. I think two years before we thought it was going to be working. So uh, and everything else is going around it. It's. Um, Are you, do you spend a lot of time there? Oh yeah, yeah. I did about eight albums there last year. Mm -hmm. When I, you know, was there all the time working right. uh, with uh, various different. I uh, did an album with them. Um, Finnish rockabilly band with a Spanish speaking rockabilly. Is that album. Tijuana Bibles? No, Tijuana Bibles are mainly Portuguese. Okay, Portuguese. Uh, and I did an album with them and uh, Bunny Ranch. There's a, a swampy, bluesy trio called Murdering Tripping Blues. Um, it's a lot of. It's been, you know, Lu Louise Aubrey is a. Singer, English singer lives in New York. She's coming back next year to do another one. It's, you know, there's a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah, huh? yeah, a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Where do you where do you see yourself in the in the next five ten years here, boss? I, I, have I, no clue. I've got no idea. I mean, I I've never really. It's never how I could see it. So I can, I can never second guess it. I don't know. I'll probably spend more time in Portugal as I get older. Yeah, um, you, you have two daughters, right? Yeah. And uh, is the family with you in Portugal when you're working, or are they Sometimes. scattered across? Well, no, they've all. Billy was at university for four years. She just uh, graduated on Friday. Oh, congratulations. It was, uh, well, I, of course, I couldn't be there. So she comes over, and she's living back at home working at Sky TV. And then Pearl's nearly 15. 
So we can't really go too straight too far. Right. I don't, I've got no idea. I, we'll, I just say we'll spend the air up in the mountain is it's the best in Europe, um, and the beer and the moonshine is plenteous. So what do you think of Texas? I know you've been here before, but uh, what what is, what is your impression? A lot like Portugal, or nothing no. like Portugal at all? No, not at all. I, I, I'm quite fascinated with Boston. <laughs> Yeah. I've always had good times so, here. Um, yesterday morning I, was, I got on a, on a Ray Camp. Ray Camp, he wasn't born in Austin, but he worked here a lot in the 50s. Yeah. And he's a rock, rockabilly singer. And uh, he had a song called Rockin' at the Ritz, which was on 6. So I sang it all morning, so I got back and I started and I put it up on the Facebook page. And, right. and, and, uh, and then we go San Antonio, which I, I've been to before it's, it's a I like it it's a great great place for me I mean, I, Texas has always been good for me I mean, <laughs> I can't, can't think of a reason at, at any time I didn't like it right. it's big yeah, yeah it's big. quite a drive yeah rather from, fly from, uh, from Chicago yeah <laughs> 20, 22 hours I think oh my goodness gracious I thought we were going to stop but they got they said no we're not stopping we're getting another driver so we got down to Memphis picked up another guy he started driving <laughs> Relentless, but that's oh, what yeah. I do, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 22 hours on a bus. What What is the uh, the most uh, exciting thing about touring for you? I love new places, and I've made so many friends all over the world. I get to see them. Yeah. I just said that my friend, the tattooist, is right. is uh, he's getting into town, come for the show. So I'm trying to cut them for a guy. Ray, I saw last night. Same town. Uh, my friend Jarko, I saw her on uh, Sunday night. We went out and saw uh, Junior Brown. It's, it's, and, it, and it continues, you know, in Phoenix. I've got some people to see, and it's just in LA, and then it's just catching up with people, which is, I like that, and I like the new places and weird places. I'm going to go back to Iceland in January. I quite enjoyed it. My wife said she'd like to sit in all the nights. I said, Let's go to Iceland. I can do a rockabilly gig in Reykjavik. <laughs> And uh, we can see the Northern, hopefully see the Northern Lights. <laughs> so I've booked it in, and I'm going up to Iceland. There you go. <clears throat> there you go. But I've seen I've seen most of the states. Yeah. And it's you know it, it has it, everywhere. It was snowing in Chicago, and I came here, and it was 80 so, degrees. Which is a bit odd for me, because <laughs> in England it's never really that hot, especially in November. Well, I appreciate you doing this very much, and uh, you're always welcome on my show anytime. And, very uh, kind of you, sir. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Boz Bora, and you're listening to The Way on KSYM San Antonio 90.1 FM, your only alternative.